Jonathan. That's awesome. My name is Mac, and we are Team Castaways. So we've all seen the recent devastation that's occurred around the world here, a lot of the hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, and fires. We've also heard of the recent uh, threats from North Korea for total devastation. Are we really prepared for such an event? And is it really going to happen to us? Is it, is it possible to happen to us? Have a look at this. Good evening. It is all out war tonight. The enemy is fire. Firefighters in Southern California are battling nine major wildfires burning out of control in and around San Diego County. This one in San Marcos is their top priority. Today, 13,000 more homes and businesses got orders to evacuate. That brings the total to 33,000. So we kind of took a different approach on the group activity. We decided to do a stage five critical elements needed for survival in like a life-threatening situation. So um, hopefully our presentation you guys can learn a little bit while. <laughs> anyway, the first critical element you're going to need is fire. Fire is going to keep you warm. It's going to boil and contaminate your food. Oh my gosh, your water. Not your food, your water. Um, it's going to keep you warm. Damn, I'm totally blowing it. Um, We've also, fire is also used, uh, we used uh, in our group, we had a chance to, to uh, work together as a team and use a ferro rod and using the magnesium and then being able to create a little uh, bird cage with uh, some tinder and we were able to light that. We really came together a group. It was kind of hard. One of the problems we had as a group was that we had uh, wind that was occurring that day. It was kind of like a storm-like condition. So we all had to pull together as a team and uh, use uh, our bodies to kind of come around and to block the wind. So. Uh, that being said, that the first element, we'd like to move to the second element, and that is water purification. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about water purification. So you can bring your own water or stash your own water away, but that's super heavy and super inconvenient to carry. So another way you can do it is by using a life straw. And it's just a nifty little tool. It's a straw, basically, that has a filter inside, so any sort of water you drink, it'll filter it right away for you. But if you can't get a life straw or if you just don't have one right away, you can also use iodine tablets. And you can just put those in your water that you consumed and captured from anywhere, and it'll automatically purify your water for you, and then you can drink it right away. Or the third option would be to filter your own water. It's cool because you can use the charcoal that you got from your fire, some sand, and um, your own shirt, your jacket, your cloth of any sort. Put it all in there and fold it over into a nice little cubby sort of thing and put it inside of your water bottle and let the water run through it and it'll automatically filter your water for you. So now that you have um, fire and water, you can go on to learning about how to get your own food from Gerardo. Hi class, my name is Gerardo Pinajero. Today I will be covering one of the most essential elements of survival and that is food. The areas of food that I will be covering are MRE, meal ready to eat calorie bars, hunting, and safe plants. These items are essential to survival in a natural disaster. The first components of food I will be speaking about are MRE bars. They are affordable ration bars that contain 2,400 calories and can sustain you for three days or 72 hours. Hunting is another key component of sur to survival. Hunting can easily be done using a simple rat trap, rat trap to capture squirrels or rats. As for safe plants, Using this visual aid, I want to show you that there is informative handbooks on safe plants and vegetation that can be edible for survival. That now that you know the elements of food needed for survival, I'm going to let Max show you the next critical element for survival. So, shelter is extremely important and that prevents exposure. Hypothermia can occur within three hours. It could be more or less depending if you're wet or not. We used a 10 by 12 plastic uh, little tarp that we were able to pick up at the local uh, hardware store, very inexpensive. We also use cordage. Cordage includes rope, 
You can use uh, bungee cords as well as the plastic ties if you wanted to use those plastic garbage ties. And it also kind of nice to have carabiners as well as um, uh, some tent stakes. We were able to put together this uh, tarp tent here using a tree. And uh, one of the things you have to worry about is ground preparation. So when you're preparing the ground, you want to make sure that uh, in the event it's raining, you want to make sure that you trench around the uh, back side of the area to keep that water from <coughs> coming in and flooding. And also you want to make sure that the tent where you're pitching that, that the wind, you're sheltering against the wind and the elements so that back side you're facing the wind. So one of the other things that you can do is with a garbage bag or trash bag, plastic garbage bag or trash bag, you can stuff that with leaves and put a nice little cozy bedding in there. So that is also uh, makes it makes it real nice. So now that you know about the shelter, I'd like to introduce now Dean, and he's going to share uh, about medical and first aid. All right. So we learn about first aid. Um, there's two different types of first aid kits. There's a first aid individual kit. Um, it's got like your basic Motrin, gauze, tape, like regular tape. Um, scissors, maybe even some gloves, just in case you get um, like contaminated with blood or anything. Uh, the second one is the trauma kit. Uh, the trauma kit is gonna have more of your severe type of stuff. You're gonna have like a tourniquet to clot blood. You're gonna have hemostatic dressing, such as like an Israeli bandage. Um, you're gonna have gloves, of course, as well. Uh, medical scissors so that it's easier to cut through like ACE wraps. And now that you guys know all about our five key elements, um, I'd like to thank you guys for listening. I'd like to thank my group for helping us learn this team bonding exercise. Um, I'm gonna remember this for a lifetime because it's gonna help me one day. And that's about it, guys. Thank you.